Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news of the day. WPI inflation has hit a record high in the month of April. So in this short and crisp analysis, we are going to examine what is WPI inflation and why has it increased to record levels and what is going to be its impact on the economy and as well as on the common man. But before we begin, I would like to remind you that tomorrow we shall be having a special session in our ongoing target prelims free crash course, which will cover all the important reports and indices that are needed for your prelims exam. This session will be taken by Sham sir and Harshmeet sir. So don't miss to watch the session live on our YouTube channel at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. The topic of WPI inflation is in news because yesterday the DPIIT or the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade has released WPI data for the month of April and it paints an alarming picture for the economy as WPI inflation levels have increased to record levels. For April 2022, WPI inflation stands at 15.08% and this is for the 13th consecutive month that WPI inflation has been in the high double digits. The inflation data suggests that the rise in prices has been led from across segments including food, fuel and manufactured commodities. As you can see in this graph over here, WPI food inflation has remained high at 8.35% along with very high levels of fuel inflation at 38.66% and the prices of manufactured commodities and products has increased to 10.85%. This surge in prices across segments has fueled WPI inflation which has hit a record high of 15.08% for the month of April. But considering that food and fuel inflation are very volatile, if you exclude them and if you measure the core inflation, you will notice that even core inflation has surged to 11.1%. These high inflation numbers point to a serious threat to the economy and is definitely going to increase the burden on the common man in the coming few months. But before we understand the causes behind high inflation and its impact, first we need to know what is WPI. WPI stands for Wholesale Price Index or Wholesale Price Inflation and it represents the rise in prices of a basket of goods at the wholesale level, that is at the producer level. This index essentially tracks inflation or price rise at the producer level, whereas its counterpart CPI Inflation or Consumer Price Inflation or Index tracks inflation at the consumer or retail level. It's very important to note that WPI index does not take into account services and it is entirely focused on goods. Here in the table you can see the basket of goods that are part of the WPI and a weightage of 22.62% has been provided for primary articles which includes food items and vegetables and a weightage of 13.15% is provided for fuel, power and energy, whereas the highest weightage is provided for manufactured products at 64.23%. This inflation data at the producer level in various goods is put together by the DPIIT or the Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade and this crucial data helps in assessing the macroeconomic and microeconomic conditions of the economy. As you can see in the table over here, Inflation has surged across goods and the highest rise has been reported by the fuel and energy sector. But since fuel and power have a lower weightage in the WPI, its impact on the final index is relatively low. But the highest weightage given to manufactured products means that even a small surge in inflation in manufactured goods and commodities will reflect prominently on the final WPI index. According to experts and analysts, this record high WPI has been driven by all the three goods and commodities that includes manufactured products, fuel and power and food. Rising food inflation is of particular concern because very high levels of inflation is being reported in vegetables, oils and even with regard to dairy products and meat. So this surge in prices across the board will definitely lead the producers to pass on the price rise to the consumers and this will eventually push up CPI inflation or retail inflation as well. 
CPI inflation is already standing at a record high of 7.8%. And in the coming months, high WPI inflation is going to drive higher CPI inflation as well. So as the higher prices are passed on by the producers to the consumers, it is definitely going to hit the common man, increase the burden on them. And this in turn will affect the macroeconomic and microeconomic stability of the economy. Because such high rise in prices will bring down spending and demand and will also adversely affect savings at the retail level and thereby will have a cascading effect on the economy. Now, it is very important to note that the WPI index does not include services. Whereas if you look at the CPI basket, it includes both goods and services. So the WPI data that you're looking at now is only referring to rise in prices in goods. And as these high prices are passed on to the consumer, it will definitely impact the prices of services as well. And this could have a serious impact on the economy and on the common man. So let's understand what's fueling this high WPI inflation by taking a look at this graph. As pointed out earlier, fuel prices have remained stubbornly high, primarily due to global factors such as the Russia-Ukraine war. But its impact on the overall WPI index is relatively less because as you saw, fuel and power have been given a lower weightage and it happens to be the smallest contributor to the overall index. So headline inflation that includes fuel inflation, food inflation, and inflation in manufactured goods and products has been mainly driven by high food prices, along with persistent inflation in manufactured products. Since manufactured products have a higher weightage in the WPI, even a small rise in prices will have a much higher impact on the overall index. And this clearly points to structural problems in the Indian economy. The general slowdown of the Indian economy since 2016 and the devastating blow of the pandemic and the lockdowns has been further compounded by adverse weather conditions and geopolitical environment. Over the last few months, food inflation has been primarily driven because of the persistent heat wave that led to a significant spike in prices of perishable items. And along with this, the economic crisis in Sri Lanka led to a surge in the prices of tea and spices. So these adverse weather and geopolitical conditions have contributed to high food inflation. But the inflation in manufactured products is mainly a result of structural problems in the Indian economy. Fuel inflation, on the other hand, which has surged to 39%, has been driven by the Ukraine crisis. And while this happens to be the most immediate and proximate reason, even long before the Ukraine invasion, fuel prices have remained high due to adverse conditions in the global oil markets. So this is the reason why it's important to understand the impact of high WPI because according to various studies of the RBI, an increase in WPI food inflation will definitely have a significant impact on retail food inflation that is measured through CPI. So you can definitely expect the food prices and prices of several essential commodities to increase significantly in the next couple of months. And this could potentially trigger a vicious cycle where the high retail prices will further drive up the wholesale food prices as well, thus locking the economy into a cycle of high inflation. Now, you should note that the RBI and the Monetary Policy Committee does not target WPI inflation. The mandate of the Monetary Policy Committee of the RBI is to target CPI inflation and achieve the set target of 4% inflation with a plus or minus 2% range. But this does not mean that the RBI does not monitor WPI inflation because as discussed, high WPI inflation will eventually lead to high CPI inflation as well. And considering that high energy and commodity prices is resulting in imported inflation, the RBI will continue to take action by most likely raising interest rates again in order to immediately contain the high WPI inflation. The RBI took such a step just a few days back and the rate increase by RBI has already dealt a shock to the economy and the capital markets. But as inflation continues to surge, both at the wholesale level and retail level, RBI will also have no other option left except to increase interest rates. And experts predict that in the next few weeks, the RBI is likely to increase interest rates by another 0.75%. While raising interest rates 
might help contain liquidity and inflation. The downside is that raising interest rates will directly affect overall demand in the economy, that too at a time when the Indian economy is struggling to revive growth. So this is going to be a tough balancing act for the RBI because on one hand, it has to contain surging inflation while trying to ensure that its actions do not hurt the economic recovery. This task is further complicated for the RBI because it does not have full control over various sources of inflation, especially imported inflation that comes through high fuel prices. So with this, let's conclude today's discussion. And if you like the initiative, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.